and uh, thanks the organizer for providing me the opportunity to present our work. And this work is about a CV QKD with coherent detection using a locally generated local oscillator. So I will start from the motivation why we want to generate local oscillator locally and followed by the detail of our solution. So today, two types of uh, detection technology has been applied in QKD. The first one is a single photon detector. And actually, over the years, the performance of SPD has been improved. However, today, it's still uh, relatively expensive. Another detection scheme is optical home dyne detection. And in this scheme, the relatively weak quantum signal is interfered with a strong local oscillator at a beam splitter. So the resulting interference signal is strong enough and can be detected with low cost photodiode. So this uh, could result in a cost effective QKD solution. And additional advantage of this scheme is the local oscillator itself also functions as a very selective filter. So for applications when your quantum signal is mixed with a broadband noise background, this feature is very appealing. For example, in uh, conducting QKD together with the classical information through the same fiber or free space QKD with a strong background light. Now one requirement in low, uh, low noise cohort detection is we have to maintain a good phase relation between the local oscillator and the signal laser. So uh, one well-known CVQKD protocol is the continuous uh, Gaussian modulated coherent state QKD. And in this scheme, artists perform a coherent state uh, whose uh, cultures are, are from uh, uh, Gaussian distributed random numbers. And at the receiver's end, uh, he can either perform single home line detection to measure one of randomly chosen culture, or he can perform double home line detection to measure both X and P culture in the same time. Now the security of CVQKD has been well established. So however, there is a gap between the security proof and its implementation. So one important assumption in security proof is the local oscillator is trusted. And in fact, if you can manipulate the local oscillator, then the security of QKD could be compromised as demonstrated in some recent papers. So however, in most of CVQKD implementation, both the quantum signal and the local oscillator are generated from the same lasers at the artist side. And both of them go through the insecure quantum channel. So this gave the eavesdrop an opportunity to modulate the local oscillator in the channel. So this obviously a security issue. And another problem is the local oscillator is much stronger than the quantum signal itself. So we do need a complicated system in order to separate them effectively at the receiver's end. So to address this question, it makes sense to generate the local oscillator at the receiver's end with an independent laser source. So one obvious question problem is how can we maintain the phase relation between two independent lasers in this case? And our solution uh, includes two ideas. The first one is the culture remapping scheme. And the second one is the pilot-aided phase recovering scheme. So now let's imagine Bob doesn't perform any phase feedback control of his uh, local laser, just to perform the measurement in a randomly rotated basis. 
So this diagram shows the relation between Bob's measurement result and the random number encoded by Alice. So they are related by this phase difference of phi between the two lasers. So one observation is it's actually okay for Bob to perform measurement in the wrong basis as long as the phase difference phi can be uh, recovered later on. And one of them, Alice or Bob, can rotate the, their data spike to regain the correlation with the partner. And this is uh, useful in practice because this means we don't need to perform real-time phase feedback control in this scheme. So in fact, if the phase drift phi is slow enough, it's possible for Alice and Bob to publicly compare some of their quantum data to determine this phase phi and use this phase phi to rotate the unpublished data. And this scheme has been applied in a CVQKD uh, demonstration to compensate the slow phase drift due to the fiber interferometer. But in the case of we have two independent laser source, then the phase will change much faster. So we need to develop a new scheme in order to recover the phase phi in real time. So one intuitive solution is we can send a relatively strong classical pulse, phase reference pulse from the artist's laser to Bob. And by measuring this reference pulse, Bob can determine the phase relation between the two lasers in real time. And this is the scheme we adopt here. And for simplicity, we use an intensity modulator to modulate the output of laser one, that's artist's laser, a CW laser. And we can generate both the reference pulse and the signal pulse. So in our scheme, we generate them alternatively with the same time delay. So at Bob's side, Bob have a double home dye detection scheme, and he can determine the phase of each pulse using his own local oscillator. So the measurement on the reference pulse provides the phase difference between the two lasers at the times when the reference pulse are generated. But what we really want to determine is the phase difference of the two lasers at the time when the signal is uh, measured. So we average the two phase difference as an estimation of the phase we want to determine. So one important question to ask is how much noise will be introduced by this scheme? So the performance of QKD is highly depends on the noise in your system. So we have identified two uh, major noise sources in this scheme. The first one is due to the laser phase noise. So what this means, so even we can determine the phase of a laser at a time t0 perfectly, we still cannot perfectly determine the phase at a later time. This is because the spontaneous uh, contribution of the spontaneous uh, photons. And this, uh, uh, this uh, laser phase noise is related to the time delay between the reference pulse and the signal pulse, and also the uh, coherent time of the laser. Another contribution is from the short noise when we perform the measurement of the reference pulse so this is uh, the second term in the equation. And this term can be reduced by increasing the photon number in your reference pulse. So now we first perform an uh, experiment to determine the laser phase noise uh, with a self-delayed uh, H-dyne detection scheme. And as you can see from the experimental result, so as expected, the laser phase noise is proportional to the time delay TD. 
and limited by the bandwidth of our home DAN detector. So we operate the system with a time delay of 20 nanoseconds. And from this result, we can determine the expected phase noise is about 0 0.04. Uh, radian squ uh, square. Now, the, uh, before I uh, moving forward, I would like to remark they do have ways to further reduce this uh, phase noise. So one obvious solution is you can try to reduce TD if you have a faster detector. And in fact, if we can run the CVQKD at 10 gigahertz, then TD could be as small as 100 picosecond, and this will result in a very small phase noise. Another uh, possibility is the new scheme proposed by Maria in his uh, paper. And in that scheme, uh, the authors proposed to generate both the signal and the phase reference pulse from the same laser pulse by using the unbalanced fiber interferometers. So nevertheless, we live with this phase noise label and uh, demonstrate, um, conduct a proof of principal experiment to show it works in a coherent communication scheme. And here we use two commercial uh, frequency stabilized lasers, the S and L. And there's no electrical or optical uh, connections between them. And we use a 25 kilometer single mode fiber as the communication channel. And the whole setup is on the t uh, top of an optical table. So here are some screenshots from the uh, oscilloscope. So uh, it's easy to visualize a vacuum input or a coherent input, but with a random phase. Now the scheme we propose that can really work for both classical and um, quantum uh, coherent communication. So we first start a classical BPSK uh, experiment to determine the phase noise of this scheme. So the though data show above as the phase measurement result at the receiver's end, and as expected, it's totally random and it's randomly distributed in the two pi range because we didn't have, because the two lasers had no phase relation. So after we apply this phase recover scheme, you can see bit one and bit zero are clearly separated. And the residual phase noise determined from the experimental result is 0 0.04, which match with our uh, noise model very well. So this experiment shows how many photons we need in the reference pulse. And as you can see here, as the photon number in the reference pulse is about a thousand, then the noise due, uh, is basically limited only by the laser phase noise. And finally, with uh, quantum input, we can see the low data is, uh, uh, low is a phase randomized current state. And after apply the phase recover scheme, so again we can recover the input coherent state. So one thing I should remark is the uh, detection noise observed in our experiment is relatively high. Let's see, the 0.8 in the short noise uh, unit, and a part of them is from the Solab commercial detectors, and a part of them is due to we use. Uh, we operate the local oscillator at a CW mode. So the noise should be possible to reduce if we use a pulsed uh, LO. And finally, we perform simulations using uh, uh, system parameters from previous experiment, and we add in the actual noise due to this phase of cover scheme. So uh, using the realistic model, based on the assumption that Eve cannot control the noise and the loss in Bob's system. And we have about 100 kilometer QKD distance. So this is comparable with the previous CVQKD demonstration. <coughs> Sorry. 
uh, we uh, so uh, we also uh, perform a simulation to de uh, to determine the required data size in order to achieve the comportable security, and that is in the order of uh, uh, tens of the, of ten. So again, it's something matched with the previous report uh, data. Now, finally, the conclusion. So we propose a CVQKD with a locally generated local oscillator. And this scheme can remove one potential set channel uh, loopholes in the QKD. And besides, that's also simplified the CVQKD implementation. So now looking forward, one motivation of the CVQKD is to provide a cost-effective solution. And today, the uh, gap between the classical current system and the CVQKD is actually becoming smaller and smaller. And we can expect in the future, we could have the same system. We can encode both the QKD signal and the classical communication signal together on the same data path and conduct them simultaneously. And this scheme may significantly reduce the cost of uh, QKD. And finally, I list some uh, papers related to uh, this work. And also, there are some uh, presentations in the post sessions. Looks like also uh, it's uh, related to uh, this research. And thank you for your attention. Well, thank you. Questions? Yes, please. I uh, missed some part of your discussion. Could you elaborate again about what is possible the security loophole and how, how you mitigate from that security loophole in your uh, protocol? Uh, do you mean the security uh, loophole related to the local oscillator? Yeah, so you, uh, your protocol, you have uh, added one F, uh, the, the reference process, right? Yes. Yeah, so to eliminate the, uh, I mean, to use the local oscillator at the receiver, right? Yes. And what is the possible in you know, a security loophole by doing that? Uh, so actually, uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, let me see. I put, yeah, I actually have a slide here. So, uh, so basically, in our scheme, we actually have an extra step to determine the phase relation between the two lasers using a phase reference pulse. So obviously this phase reference pulse can be controlled by the eavesdropper, which means the phase phi determined by Alice and Bob is fully under eaves control. However, the security of CVQKD actually guaranteed this, uh, if you somehow manipulate this phase uh, difference, this will turn out as an excess noise in Alice and Bob's measurement result. So it will be always detected. So in short, if you manipulate the phase reference pulse, he will reduce the secure key rate, but he will not compromise the security of QKD. Oh, thank you very much.